Welcome back to Rust Timber Forge. Today we are going to be making the entrenching tool for our Bushmaster kit. This will be part three of this multi-part series. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this end off, get it in the forge, get it straight, and start forging it. Okay, welcome back YouTube to another episode of Bushmaster Kit. We are, as you see on the screen, we are back on Patreon where we offer giveaways, which this will be given away. This whole kit will be given away to my Patreon members. And by the end of January, we'll have a video out there today. So it uh, will tell you when. But uh, if you're on Patreon, you're already going to know when. So it's only $10 a month. And you get giveaways, you get webinars, you get Discord, freaking live chats, and all the little things that go on behind the scenes. You get uncut video footage with separate commentary than what you're seeing right here. So, um, and then we have uh, the t shirts, the zipper hoodies, the long sleeve shirts, and the pullover hoodies on rusthammerforge.com forward slash shop. If you are a Patreon member, you also get that $10 off every purchase on the shop. So, get on Patreon take advantage of that. So, this is, this project right here was actually pretty simple. It's, it's you're basically making a, a gardening hoe, basically. And, you know, you're going to be able to, to use this in many different uh, applications. But, for the, the actual use of this kit, how I would use this would be if I, would, if I needed a trench or if I needed a, a, a hollow um, for like a, a, a structure to, to get out to live in for a while. Out in the woods, I would uh, basically use this tool to dig a, a boundary trench to push water around my structure so that it doesn't go into my structure. And also, I would then use this to uh, take out the, a little bit of earth within the structure so that it is a, a hollow down there where I'm going to be sleeping standing and eating and cooking and all that stuff. So that's basically what I would use this for. Now I did say in other episodes where you could be carving a bowl with this, which you could. Uh, you could you could carve a canoe with this, which you could, you know, with the axe and the saw. And this you could easily well not easily, but you could carve out a log canoe. If you if you so desire you needed to have one. That's the entire purpose of this is to be multifunctional in a multitude of different applications. Now, when I get ready to sharpen this, I'm going to put a, a, a carving bevel on this, basically. So, and something that you're not going to be afraid to go into the ground and, and maybe run up against some rocks, but you're also going to be able to, to cut roots with it. Um, small roots with it you got the saw and your freaking axe for it and all the other stuff. For the most part, this is going to be like a multi-tool for if you need to make a bowl or a cup, you can, you know, if you have to. Um, it's going to have that, that bevel, kind of a chisel bevel on, on it to where it's going to allow you to cut the ground just as well as carve out a bowl. You know, so if, you're, if you're trying to survive though in the wilderness, you're, you, the least of your worries is do I have a bowl? Do I have a plate? You know, normally it's can I find a, um, a can? Can I find a, a pot? Can I find something out there? Can I find a rock that will hold together under heat and water in it so I can boil water? Can I do stuff like that? This this will allow you to to make um, 
more comfortable amendments, but not necessarily uh, in dire need. carry a little bit of weight to it. Um, it's it's very uh, forward weighted. It's longer. It's the longest tool in the kit. You got it, you know, so you can you know, a good swing on it. And you're looking at probably four to five inches longer than the axe. You, know, you really want to be, when you're moving the earth and, and trying to get the a, a hollow dugout, uh, or if you're trying to out a bank, you, know, you want something that you can swing for it really good. You know, the, the blade is not very long, and so, but it is weighted towards that blade so that you're, you can get in there and really do some It's a pretty standard smithing too. Uh, we're not doing anything that you couldn't do with a hammer. Uh, it's just, this is a lot of Yeah, you probably could. Yeah. Uh, 
you just get a hint because of all the time that went in it, all the know-how that went in it, the carrying cases can come with it. Um, yeah, you can definitely sell this for a bunch of money, but it doesn't make any, doesn't really make any sense. Um, I, I like money just as much as anybody else. I really do. But it, it doesn't make sense for me to to charge an astronomical amount for something that really didn't take me much time to make. I mean, it did. I make it look easy because of the experience I have, but it's the, ma the majority of the time is coming at. I mean, we're talking right now. The forging process is what I charge people. I don't charge them for grinding, I don't charge them for animal drill, I don't charge them for the amount of time that I'm sitting here editing the videos. Um, I don't. So, when we're, when we're looking at a piece to go sell, it's, okay, how much of, of forging was involved in this piece, the individual piece? And, you know, what is that equate to? my mind where if I'm looking to buy a entrenching yeah, how did, what does that equate to what I would purchase if I wasn't didn't have the ability to make it. so about a hundred and fifty bucks is what I said pretty reasonable but it, I mean it's a pretty simple build if you if you really if, if you're a smith and you been smithing for a while, you know, the, the simplicity of this build is rather apparent. You know, there's not a, there's not a lot of, of super uh, intricate forging, forging in this piece. There isn't a lot in the axe. There's definitely a, you know, none in the saw. It's all, it's all uh, stock that the saw was. But these are all the basic principles of forging that I'm using to make the axe and this so it's it's not in the realm of you have to be an expert to make this tool. You have to be an expert to make this tool. A, a beginner with a little bit of uh, direction and a, and a little bit of time needs to make these tools. They, they may not be as refined, but you can make these tools. Because, I mean, this is just a hunk of steel right now. When we get into the actual heat treatment process, that's what it becomes a useful tool. We want to make this this uh, hard enough to where you get a an edge, but not so hard that it'll chip when you get a rock. You've got to be able to run this through some very, very uh, hard terrain, and it still stand up. So the heat treatment for this, which we'll cover in that part of the video. Um, It'll be, it'll be pretty simplistic in itself. We'll put a, uh, we're going to treat this like 5160 leaf spring, and we're going to you know heat it up to, to critical temperature, which is you're looking at when the non-magnetic comes to play. You're looking at right around 1525, 1550. So right about what the color is right now on the on the upper screen here. You know that's that's a that that, that kind of uh, bland red, super bright, too hard. You know, it, it's way too hard if you when you're uh, too hot. If you're gonna do it at that temperature for a, a relatively high carbon steel. So 5160, you got 60, like about 60% of that is, is carbon. This is this is probably a little higher than that. But this steel is also meant to be very durable. I don't know the composition of this steel. It's a mystery steel off of uh, road graders, and it's, it's, it's like a rock pit steel. Uh, so it has to uh, last for a while and be very, very durable. So some of you may be asking, you know, why the two cameras rolling? Why did you just cut between each one? Well, I could have, but I, I find that it's it's very distracting. 
at times, and I wanted to see how this would look in this format. I really like the way this turned out, you know, the two different cameras and angles where you can see both at the same time, and then there's a lot of work to get you synced up, but I really like this, but let me know down in the comments whether you like it or not if you got to this point in the video. So, if, if you like this format, we can continue introducing this into the video formats, um, but I also see the benefit of of cutting between each camera angle. Um, for some reason, it tends to having more ca different camera angles tends to keep people's attention, I guess, a little more. But it is what it is. I'm just here to make videos. I'm not here to really make a bunch of money on this. I'd like to be compensated for my troubles, but it's not. It's not important to me, to be honest. I tell everybody that when they were looking to take a class or anything, um, yeah, I'll, if you want to pay me, pay me. Fine, that's great. You know, if you, if you can pay me. But it, I mean, if you still really want to learn, and you know, times are tight, which I understand that times are really tight. You know, we're gonna work something out. Money to me is not the end. Money allows me to continue doing this and and getting new stuff for the for the shop. I'm not I'm not paying bills with what I make for the shop. I my bills are paid and I'm just out here making stuff, having fun, living life, you know. And if I can teach others to do the same thing, awesome. If I get paid to do that, outstanding. But it's not the end of it. I, I give away so much free stuff, it's ridiculous. Free classes, free items. But, you know, we're at a point, my wife and I are at a point right now in our life where we can not have to worry about anything. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to you know, all of our bills are paid. You know, we live in very comfortably. We're not rich by any means. You know, we're not even 90s rich. You know, those that know what I'm talking about understand what I mean. We're, we're not 90s or 80s rich. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're comfortable. You know, even in, in this economy, we're, we're basically have got our everything figured out to where we don't have to freaking worry about it. So, um, so don't, if you're, if you're looking at, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to support the channel is Patreon or the Rest Here on Porch online shop. You know, I don't have a lot of stuff on there right now. We, we're but we will be putting, getting a production line of spike knives out. We'll be doing, getting some more hammers and axes. I got some stock coming in. We'll get some hammers and axes put up there. Uh, we'll do, we'll get some tong production going back in. This is like year two at our new place. So the, the, this whole time I've been, we're basically just trying to get everything settled. We've been working on our place here. We have the, uh, the cabin done in the backyard, pretty much done. Uh, our daughters are, are staying in there while they go to college for the first two years. So, you know, once that's all done, it'll get turned into a place for students and, and I mean, friends to stay when they come visit. You know, so you know, if you if you want to support the channel, know that you're supporting. You're allowing me to continue to give free stuff to people <clears throat> and free classes to people. And, and, you know, if I have this steady the shop income coming in, then I don't need to worry too much about selling or, or, or charging for classes. I can, people can take classes and, because they really want to learn about blacksmith and not have to worry about financial 
um, part of it. You know, that's the, the real beauty of Patreon and, and online sales is it, it allows me to, to give something to someone else. That's the real, the real beauty of all this. But you guys have all seen this before on my videos and other videos. You know, I'm not doing anything super crazy here. You know, it's, it's, this isn't necessarily a, a how-to, so we're not going to necessarily break it down into what I'm doing each time. You can see that I'm spreading out the, the blade on this and elongating it. And if you watch the crappy stop motion uh, my, my stop motion videos on this then you can see the change that happens within within the blade itself so this is also the same way you can make you can make a um, a shovel you know from a single piece you isolate the, the front there and then you spread it way out right, we left this pretty thick you know if we were making a, a shovel like a fireplace or something like that, an ash shovel, we, we, we would take this down pretty thin, probably around, take this down to probably around, oh, a sixteenth of an inch, spread it way out, and then turn it into an ash shovel. I mean, it's, up until this point, it could turn into anything, literally anything. got a frog in my throat so but but yeah it's it's uh there's there's nothing saying this it has to be turned into a entrenching tool at this point and that's what i want to make so i'm gonna kind of cup this a little bit so we get a little more chopping power down there on that that beveled edge not a lot you want you still need to be able to come in and dig with it so you really got to, and that's another reason why it's a little longer. So you can get a two-handed, you know, kind of a scraper on it. This would also be a good wood scraper, too, for scraping tables. You know, if you try if you need to take off the finish. This could be a, multi, a multitude of different things. So, but we're making an entrenching tool. That's what it's going to turn into. But yeah, so like I said, if you guys want to support the shop and the channel, uh, Rusty Hammer Forge on Patreon, that's patreon.com forward slash Rusty Hammer Forge. It, or you can go to www.rustyhammerforge.com forward slash shop and get yourself some shirts. We are going to be changing the... graphics on the front of the shirts for the signature series which is what we're showing there it's it's a little bit different but not so much that it's going to make a huge deal so uh, don't be surprised if what you get is slightly different i think it's actually better slightly different than what was in the picture so the uh, and we're going to be changing here as soon as i can find them we're going to be changing the clothing material. Right now it's a 50-50 cotton polyester blend. Well, that's not very conducive for working with hot, hot metal and sparks all the time. So we're going to be changing to a material that is still very comfortable to wear, but will be uh, fire and spark resistant. So that'll that'll be what I wear in the shop. You know, you guys get to what get to buy and wear what I wear every day. So there you go. I just gotta find the right the right stuff and it not be like astronomically expensive. So. But thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate those that are signing on or getting signed up for Patreon. And as always, I, I really appreciate those that, that support the channel in a multitude of different ways. You know, sharing the videos and, and you know, um, stuff coming to the shop and hanging out and having fun. So, you guys.
guys, um, as always, stay safe out there. Be well.